Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Hello and welcome to our Tuesday Night Live Bible Study. I'm Andrew Womack and I've got Carrie Pickett here with me. She is such a blessing Thank you. Uh, to me and to so many, many, many people. And anyway, we're glad that you're with us. You know, let me just say up front that if you haven't been watching our Truth Lovers broadcast that we're doing this week, we're doing this on Monday through Friday. Of course, we've already had Monday and Tuesday at 3 p.m. until 4.30. And I spend about 20 minutes sharing from the Word, and then we take an hour's worth of questions. And um, so it's similar to what we do here, but it's just broader in its scope. And I'm even taking questions about, uh, today I took one about... Uh, you know, would DeSantis be a good candidate for president? <laughs> so we're talking about some political things. And so the scope is just a little different. And if you haven't checked that out, we'll be doing that every day at 3 o'clock till 4.30 through this coming Friday. And this is kind of a test. Yeah, to just and they get to you're... actually call and talk to you. Yeah. So they're not text, you're not texting your questions. And you actually get to call and talk to Andrew. So that right. is So when you fun. text them in, see, Carrie just picks and chooses which <laughs> one she wants. We take them, and this is just totally off the cuff. <laughs> had some questions about the rapture yesterday and <laughs> things that I wouldn't normally share. So anyway, it's been really, really good. That's awesome. So tell them how they can get involved tonight. Yes, so welcome everybody to Tuesday Night Live Bible Study. We have some really great things for you. As you guys know, uh, for those that are regular, we're doing this every day of the week, Monday through Friday. So Monday and Friday at 10, Tuesday and Thursday night, 6 p.m., just like this evening. And then Wednesday mornings, bright and early, 7 o'clock in the morning. So that means that wherever you're watching from, uh, it works with your schedule. We've been meeting so many people the last two and three conferences here in uh, Woodland Park. We've seen so many people that have come and just said the live Bible studies are such a blessing. So we love you guys watching and especially love uh, you interacting. And so this is live, which means you get to interact. So the way you can do that is whatever form that you're watching on, go down to the chat section and type in the question. If you're watching off YouTube, then send your questions into livequestions at awmi.net or you can text in your question. Say you're watching in the car or you're doing something around the house. Well, Hopefully then, you aren't driving if you're watching in the car. Well, I've done that. So anyway. Well, we do not advocate that. 719-212-2555. <laughs> Stop at a stoplight, text us a question. <laughs> And we would love to interact with you. Also, our prayer ministers, and this is something that has been started since this beginning of this month, is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that's fully on Saturday and Sunday as well, 24 hours. And so this is amazing. This is just our desire to continue to minister to you, whatever time zone, whatever you're going through at any time of the day, we've got prayer ministers who are going to pray over you, speak the word. And so we would really love to interact. And when you do call them, you can get prayer. You can ask about all of our resources because we have thousands of hours of resource and materials that can help you exactly with what you're going through or maybe what you need to be able to learn to help somebody else and what they're going through. So uh, excellent resources. And then when you talk to them, say, listen, I would love to be a part of this because honestly, it is our partners that are allowing us to continue to spread the gospel, continue to do new shows, new ways of reaching people. And so if you'd like to be a part of helping us plant seed all over the world, we would love for you to be a partner with us. So you can also call the prayer minister and ask him about that. So just a couple of things. We have some amazing things happening here at Karis Bible College, different conferences around. Our next event is going to be the Dallas Gospel Truth Conference. And that's going to be November 11th through the 13th. So we've already got a ton of people from Dallas already expecting us, waiting for us. But if you're near or far, please come into Dallas. We would love to see you. So Andrew will be ministering. And Mike, Mike and Carrie. Yeah. And you just finished the Women's Arise yes. Conference. And I've heard great reports on that. Oh, women's Give us are a little... Testimony. Women's Arise was awesome this year. So Audrey Mack and Nicole Marbach and myself. And so we taught on uh, just intimacy with God, which is such a big deal for anybody. I even had a guy meet me on the stairway today. He said, I was in the hallways at the Women's Arise. I was blessed by it. So oh, really? it's Yeah. So it's not just... Was he security or something? Uh, he was on conference team. And so uh -huh. he was working conference. So anyway, it's for men or women. Uh, I would check out the archives because we just really talked about intimacy with God and had so many people 
ourselves set free, blessed, our worship was phenomenal. So I would encourage you ladies and gentlemen, if you want to go back and watch that, it was a phenomenal conference. So many people, we had people get supernaturally healed at the conference. Uh, we had one lady, she had an adverse reaction to the vaccines and she was twitching and her bipolar had reactivated because God had healed her and it reactivated. But and I was, these vaccines are safe. <laughs> well, anyway, it came out for her. And uh, so we prayed next day, she was totally healed. Everything had stopped. Great All the Lord. twitching had stopped. Everything supernaturally healed. Uh, and so it was just awesome. We saw a lot of words of wisdom and just supernatural things happen. So I would encourage you to go back and check that out. It was awesome. That's great. Yeah. And then also we have our Heart of Christmas. This is our Christmas live uh, program that we're doing as far as uh, around the holidays. It is phenomenal. Life-changing, in fact. And we've had people supernaturally healed and set free and saved during these uh, broad, uh, productions. And so I would encourage you, please check that out. You can go to awmi.net slash events to get tickets. This is an amazing investment for you, your kids. It can become a tradition. Come to Colorado and see this show. And then also the weekend after that, we're having a live nativity. Our live nativity is, uh, we, we get behind our big glass windows. We've got the LED, all the live actors. It's so beautiful. So check that out also the 16th through the 19th of December. So and we also bring in camels and uh, they yes. had horses and donkeys. and. Uh, yep. Last year I was holding the camel. So yeah. you never know. <laughs> you were a big part. You and your family were some of the Yeah, because all, all the students were gone for Christmas yeah. break. And so, dun, 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 I was a shepherd girl. I held the lambs to stay warm outside. So anyway, some great things are happening here at Karis Bible College. So I would encourage you, connect with us, awmi.net slash events to find out all that's happening. That's awesome. Amen. <laughs> all right, tonight I want to share with you just some really simple stuff. And some of, you know, sometimes when a scripture is familiar, People think, oh, I know that. But uh, I'm going to share from Psalms chapter 23 tonight, which is probably, I would guess, the best known psalm uh, in the Bible. Mm -hmm. But I've been studying this, and the Lord spoke some things to me personally that are, are a big part of what's coming up in January. We're having... You know, we're finishing off paying our garage off. Praise God. <laughs> That's exciting. $28 million that we've raised and paid off in, what was it, 20? 22 months. 20, 22 Two. or 28? I thought it was 22. Anyway, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. <laughs> and so we're having a note burning service, I think, December the 3rd. Third. But then in January, we're going to start uh, raising the funds for our uh, construction of our student housing, yeah. which is going to be a deal changer for so many people. And the Lord spoke to me through Psalms 23. I don't know that I'll share what he spoke directly to me with you tonight, but in the process of that, I've just gone back through Psalms 23 and been meditating on it and uh, just getting a lot of great things out of it. And so I just want to share this with you. It'll be real simple, but again, sometimes you can get so familiar yeah with something that you don't know what it says. So just approach this brand new and ask God to speak to you. And um, believe it or not, I could spend hours on this psalm, so we're going to have to just say some things quickly, but maybe it'll cause you to think about it and go back and study it on your own and get things out of it. But look at this, Psalms chapter 23, verse 1. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Man, there is a lot right there. You know, the word Lord here is all capitalized, which what this is talking about, this means that this is Lord Jehovah, Lord God Almighty. And we need to think about that, that it's the Lord who's our shepherd, the Almighty. If you really got a revelation of who it is that's our Father, who has redeemed us, uh, that, that would change your expectations. Some people live their life with such low expectations because they just feel like God is limited in what he mm. can do. You know, I've given this testimony often about a person that came and said they had pain in their neck and their back and their hips and down the sciatica into their feet. And they said, but if I could just get the neck pain gone. And I told them, I said, well, I understand because if we ask God to heal all of those things at one time, the lights in heaven might dim. I'm not sure God could do all of that at one time. See, that's a person who's <laughs> not realizing the Lord is our shepherd. Yeah. 
You could take that and just meditate on this and think about who it is that has revealed himself. And again, we could spend more time on that, but he's our shepherd. It would be just to say he's our God, that he's the top of the food chain, that he's the <laughs> almighty, that he's our master, we're his slave. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of things that you could say, but to say that he's our shepherd, you know, a shepherd tends for the sh cares for the sheep. And again, if you had time, you could turn over to John chapter 10 where Jesus talked about, I am the good shepherd. And he contrasted himself with a hireling who flees when danger comes. But man, he will lay down his life for the sheep and the sheep hear his voice. Again, we could spend an hour just going through and amplifying on the Lord is my shepherd. Man, that's powerful. God loves you. God is out to protect you, to promote you. Mm, he is no. not here to hurt you. And so many people see God as a harsh, angry God who is demanding their obedience and very harsh towards them. Did you know I've had some people, I've personally not raised sheep, but I've had people that raised sheep. Now, you're a farm girl. Yeah, but we, it was cattle. But you grew up with cattle. I've heard people who were cattle people saying that sheep are dumb. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but I've heard this my whole life, that sheep are just dumb and that they just follow. I mean, you can get, get them in line and they, they'll just all go off a cliff one <laughs> after another, that they're just dumb. There's a reason that the Lord called us sheep, but a shepherd <laughs> takes care of his sheep and protects them and notice this, it says, I shall not want. I heard Jesse Duplantis a couple of months ago refer to this verse saying that we shall not want. Most people think we, we will get our basic needs supplied, that you can have minimum standard, but you mm -hmm. can't get to a place to where you don't actually have any wants. And yet this says that I shall not want. Wow. Boy, we could spend a lot of time talking about that. Now, I think it needs to be uh, tempered or balanced with the fact that it says in Psalms chapter 37, verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I don't believe that this is saying that if you want to go rob a bank and get by with it, that, that the shepherd will help you do that. Or if you want a new <laughs> mate, you don't like the one you've got, God will just give you another one. I don't think that's what this is talking about. No. But if you are delighting yourself in the Lord mm -hmm. and if you have godly desires, you should get, reach a place to where you don't even want. Yeah. You know, Jamie and I, this is a process. It doesn't happen just overnight. It's, you know, seed time and harvest. But Jamie and I have been serving the Lord for over uh, 50 years, for 53 years. And uh, we just had our 49th anniversary wedding this anniversary. last week. Yeah, 49th wedding anniversary. And we really are at a place that we don't want for anything. I mean, we've got our house paid for. We've got all our vehicles paid for. We don't have any wants or any needs in the natural and also in the spiritual realm. There's really nothing that we want. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I want is, you know, for the vision that God has given me for the Karis Bible College and stuff, I want to see that come to pass. And it's in process. And we're going to be sharing more about that in January. But honestly, you can reach a place to where God has just met every single need mm -hmm. and gone beyond needs to where you shall not want. And here's one of the things that the Lord was speaking to me through this scripture, what drew me back to Psalms 23. I looked up the word want, and the word want means uh, that you want, uh, well, the Greek word here, it means that you won't want or lessen or fail. And I've been meditating on this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not fail. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not uh, lessen. In anything. And also, this exact same Hebrew word that was translated want right here was translated abated in Genesis chapter 8, verse 3, where it says the waters were abated from the earth. And then in Genesis chapter 8, verse 5, it says the waters decreased continually until the dry land appeared. And so, this same word was translated decrease there in Genesis 8, 5. So, here's another way of saying this that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not decrease. Wow. And boy, that has really been ministering to me. 
You know, God has done so many good things for us. And I mean, awesome. we, we, we were in a meeting today and there's some things coming up. I won't go into the whole details, but it is phenomenal what God has done. And we have, what is it, $129 million worth of assets that we've gained in the last 10 Amen. years. It is phenomenal what God has done. And when I look at that, you think about how in the world can we keep up this pace? <laughs> and yet I was reading this verse and the Lord said that you shall not decrease. Wow. You shall not diminish. Amen. It shall not lessen. <laughs> and the Lord was just speaking to me that he never serves dessert first, <laughs> that the best is yet to come. And this isn't just for me and for Carrie. This is for every one of you. Amen. The Lord is your shepherd and God is a God of addition, multiplication, not subtraction. Whatever God has done in your life, regardless of how good it is, there's always something better to come. God never runs out of blessings. He can always provide more. You know, I mentioned Jesse Duplantis earlier, and Jesse gets a lot of flack, and people criticize him because he's believing, I forget the exact uh, amount, I think it's 60. Six, he said 6 billion point well, 100. that's billion. for a satellite. Oh, mm -hmm. system that will cover the world so that when the Antichrist takes over, he'll still be able to broadcast. So he's <laughs> believing for 6.6 .6 billion, but he's believing for $60 million for a some fancy airplane. And anyway, the first time I heard about that, I thought, who needs $60 million? I said, man, I, if somebody gave me an airplane worth $60 million, I'd sell it and build some buildings. <laughs> so I was a little critical at first, but you know, I was talking to Jesse and Jesse was flying in his airplane and I don't know how much that one cost, 30 million or something. Mm -hmm. And he was flying in it and he said that the Lord spoke to him. He was just praising God and saying, Father, thank you for your goodness and thank you for your provision. And he was praising God. And he said that the Lord spoke to him and said, Jesse, do you think this is all I can do? And it set him back because he thought he was really doing good, just being yeah. thankful for what he had. And God says, look, you need to continually be stretching and you need to constantly believe for more. And he says, you need to, he says, you've got this jet and it's serving you fine, but you need to believe for more. And so Jesse, the reason that he started believing for a bigger jet more expensive jet wasn't because he wanted it. He was happy with what he had, but he just believes that God wants to constantly be stretching you and you have to be constantly yeah. putting out your faith. So when I heard that, when I heard about his motivation for wanting this, now that changed everything. Yeah. And I'm saying to you that there are some of you that maybe you're blessed and everything's fine, but you need to constantly be recognizing that God's never going to just give you less. It's not like you ever hit this plateau and then you just remain there. God has done great things in my life and we've seen a lot of miraculous things happen, but you don't ever just plateau. If you aren't still growing, if you ever peak mm. and now you're headed down the other side, that's, that's not the way that God wants it to be. Oh, and you ought to be going out on the upswing. You ought to still be increasing. So that's one of the things that the Lord has been speaking to me through this word want. It means to, to uh, lessen, to fail, or um, what was that in Genesis chapter 8 verse 5? Decrease. decrease. It means to decrease. You will never decrease. Think about that. You'll never decrease. And man, this has been blessing me. Because again, sometimes you feel like, man, I've been putting out all of this energy and we've done all of these things. God, am I going to have the energy, the strength to maintain and stuff? And it shouldn't even be thinking that way. It's not about maintaining. It's about increase. God yes. is a God of addition and multiplication. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. And I could spend a lot more time on just the first verse. <laughs> that's really <laughs> good. Healing, Kane. And then in verse 2, it says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Of course, for a sheep, green pastures, man, that's awesome. This is abundant provision. It's not just, you know, a little clump of grass here and a little clump of grass over there, but man, you just got more than you could ever deal with. Again, this is not just supplying your basic necessities in the 
and just needs, but this is supplying your wants. That's awesome. And he leads me beside the still waters. In other words, uh, water is essential for life, for an animal. It's just necessary. And these are still waters, which still waters run deep. So this means it's not just a little shallow pool. It's not a little creek or a stream. This is something that has an abundant supply and that you'll never run out of water. Even if a drought comes, you'll still be provided. Mm, that's good. And think about this. You know, we've gone through COVID. Matter of fact, we were having an impact, uh, economic impact study presented to us in our team meeting today. And one of the points that this uh, person who's making this, he's gonna present it to the city on Saturday. One of the points that he was making is that charities are basically economic downturn resistant, that they don't fluctuate the way that other things, like for instance, if you've got a defense contractor that you're depending on for your economy, man, those things rise and fall. If you're dealing with, you know, just so many businesses during this pandemic had to close down, had to lay off people mm -hmm. and stuff like this. We have, I don't even know how many. Yeah, it's over 900 global employees. That's unbelievable. <laughs> I just found this out last week. But we have over 900 employees, and did you know we didn't lay off one person? Matter of fact, we grew we like hired globally in we, locations. We grew by 100 or 200 people <laughs> last year, yep. and so here we are by still waters. That means that the supply is so deep and so abundant that even if you go through a pandemic, it's not going to affect us. Amen. We didn't lay off one person. We didn't cut back on any salaries. We gave raises. Mm -hmm. And we have done all of these things. And started many new things. Oh boy, we have started. And we've, <laughs> we've gone on new television stations. We have expanded our hours of operation for our phone center. Uh, we're, I mean, yep. it, we're, we haven't peaked yet. We're still growing yeah. and increasing. It's just Amen. amazing. So this is what it's talking about, that he leads me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. And if you look the word restore up here, it specifically says to return to a, an original, I mean, to return to a previous condition, not necessarily the original condition. But if you continue to study where this word comes from, it's literally talking about that the Lord will put you back to a place where of innocence and purity and things like this. You know, we had a broadcast this afternoon and I was talking to uh, Julianne Hartman who hosted that. And anyway, she was telling me some of the things that she's been through and I didn't know some of the stuff that she's been through. But she's been through a lot. And yet God has restored her. There's a lot of people that when you come in to crisis situation and you have ma major failures in your life, they just feel like, well, I'm damaged goods and then I'll never be able to recover from this. But the Lord restores your soul. Mm -hmm. Notice he didn't say that he restores your spirit. In the new covenant, when you get born again, you got a brand new spirit and your spirit is sealed and it never fluctuates. But your body and your soul, they do get affected by walking through this fallen world and your body can wear out your emotions. You can be affected with fear, discouragement, anger, bitterness. But man, when you look at the Lord as your shepherd, he restores your That's soul. Good. He puts it back. It's like pushing a reset button. Mm. You know, I'm a little computer challenged, but I've learned <laughs> that when things aren't working on my phone or on my computer to just turn the thing off and turn it back on, <laughs> reset it, and it seems like everything reboots. Did you know that God will do that with you? And it doesn't matter what hap what's happened to you. It doesn't matter how much you've messed up. The Lord restores your soul. He leads you in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Mm -hmm. Again, there's a lot of time I could spend on this, but he doesn't do it because you have done everything right and because you're such an awesome person and you deserve it. No, Praise he God. does it for his namesake. He does it to honor his covenant. Did you know in the new covenant, we actually have a covenant with God through Jesus and God's covenant is with Jesus, and we get in on that covenant based on Jesus' goodness, based on His performance, based on what He did. It's not based on your performance. That's good. And because of that, it doesn't matter how much you mess up. Jesus is never going to mess up. 
and he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And so you get all of the benefits of his righteousness and his holiness. So he leads you in these paths of righteousness. And again, righteous is a word that's taken on a lot of religious connotations. My little layman's definition is it's just talking about right standing with God. God will lead you and teach you how he loves you and that he's pleased with you. Even though you may not be pleased with yourself and your performance hasn't been right, God is pleased with you because you have humbled yourself and accepted the salvation that is offered through Jesus. And you need to meditate on that. Again, there's so much in each one of these verses. In verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Notice that this isn't talking about death specifically. It's talking about going through the valley of the shadow of death. When you look at death this way, death is really not that big of a deal. Over in Hebrews, I believe it's chapter 2, verse 15. I'd have to look this up, but it talks about those who all their lifetime were subject to bondage because of fear of death. And Jesus has delivered us of this fear of death. A Christian doesn't need to fear death. It's no, it's no more than really just walking through and having the shadow of death come upon you. And this, I can't verify this in Scripture, but I've heard people's testimony who went on the other side, and I've talked to many of them, and I personally believe that like when a person leaves this body in death, that, you know, something may happen to their physical body that is just terrible, and you think about what a terrible way to die, but I think that their spirit's long gone. They're in the presence of the Lord by the time all this stuff is happening to their physical body. And so it's... It's not this bad thing. It's just like walking from one room to another room. Mm. You know, I really believe that. My mother and sister died in the last decade, and I have yet to shed a tear for any, either one of them because I, there's many times that I left them and I said, I'll see you again, and it's exactly like that. I know I'm going to see them again, and both of them were in a situation that they needed to get out of this body <laughs> and yeah. into the next, and, man, they're rejoicing, Amen. and death has just lost its sting. Man, this is awesome, and notice it says you walk through it. This valley of death is not the final destination. It's not like you get buried there. You just walk through this valley of the shadow of death. And even when you do that, you fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Again, we could spend so much more time on that. But the fact that God will never leave us nor forsake us. Good. Man, that's awesome. Amen. You know, I am absolutely 100% assured of that. I'm not sure that I'll be everything I need to be. But I am absolutely assured that God is going to be everything he, He's promised to be. Amen. to me and that he'll never leave me nor forsake me. My confidence doesn't come because I'm confident I'll do everything right, but because I believe that God is that good of a God. Amen. Just for time's sake, I'm going to have to run through this, but in verse 5, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Notice it's not saying yeah. that you don't have enemies. It's not saying that there aren't bad times, but even in the midst of that terrible situation, God can provide a feast for you. You can be rejoicing and praising God. Just like Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16, they were in prison with their backs beaten and their feet and hands and stocks, and they started praising God. They had a feast mm -hmm. in the presence of their enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. This is just talking about, again, people would anoint themselves with olive oil. That's how they groom themselves, their hair and stuff. <laughs> Praise God, I don't, yeah, I don't have that. But this was a way of showing that you were healthy, that you were well-groomed. God takes care of you. You've got the oil of joy on you. Your cup is running over. Again, talking about more than just basic needs, but God supplies everything so that you don't even want. And then in verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Notice it didn't say that only goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. That's not what it says. This isn't saying that you'll never have a problem. You will have problems. We live in a fallen world, and there's going to be things happen, but regardless of what's going on, goodness and mercy are always, always, always with you. And so you've got a choice. Are you going to focus on all of the negative things that go on in your life? Or are you going to focus on the fact that goodness 
and mercy are with you. And yeah. this is really what distinguishes those who wind up winning from those who wind up being discouraged and quitting. It's not that you don't have the problems that other people have. It's the way you process it, the way you deal with it. Yeah. And you look beyond the problem and you see goodness and mercy. You find a, a way to succeed through anything mm -hmm. that happens. You know, I've had a lot of really negative things happen to me. I remember an interview over in Ireland where, um, where you were, no, that was before your class. And we went to Ireland, and anyway, it's a long story, but I got tricked into going on a radio program, and the guy uh, had people call in and say I was lying about everything, that I was stealing money, and it was just terrible. And he humiliated me. It was one of the worst experiences I ever had. But you know what? I could have sat there and focused on what he was saying to me on radio in Dublin and everybody. It was the most popular program in Dublin. Everybody was hearing it. I could have focused on that. But instead, I just kept focusing on I know that God is with me. God loves me. And this guy, when they'd go to a commercial, he'd say, why don't you get mad? Why don't you respond? He was trying to get me to say some things and, and say something he could take hold of. And I said, I know what you're doing. I know you've planted all of these people to call in. I said, the only thing I can do is I refuse to get mad at you. You cannot get me in the flesh. And I just kept loving him, and I was nice to him. <laughs> and so I focused on the good instead of the bad. And did you know that after that terrible situation, our attendance doubled? <laughs> Everybody wanted to come out and see who this was and what was going on. We saw hundreds of people born again in great <laughs> miracles. So you Amen. can take any situation That's awesome. and work it together for good, but you've got to focus on the goodness and mercy instead of all of the negative things that That's are going good. on. Amen. So anyway, that was really quick. Amen. That's that good. was so good, though. So we've got a lot of really great questions, and so I want to jump into them. Okay. Um, so one of the things is uh, Darius asked this on chat. He said, I know before any of these things manifest, I have to see the promises of God first in my imagination. How can I make myself see the blessings? Well, let me share a scripture with you. I wrote a book. Mm -hmm on imagination, and the day that that book came out, I found this verse, <laughs> and I thought, well, my book's out of, out of, uh, out of, out of date. <laughs> it's out of date, but I saw this verse the day that my book came out, and it says over here in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of of remembrance. And that word minds right there is the same word that was translated imagination in Luke mm. chapter 1, verse 51. So I saw that the way you stir up your imagination is by remembering. Now, there are probably other ways, but this is a great way. That's good. And so you go back and you remember mm -hmm. the faithfulness and the goodness of God. And if you're young in the Lord or if you haven't you know, seen God do a lot of things in your life, you can go back to the Word of God and remember the goodness and faithfulness of God to other people and then take with that Romans chapter 2, verse 11, that God's no respecter of persons. If that's the way He treated Elijah, Moses, David, or whoever, He's no respecter of persons. He'll do the same thing for you. So one of the ways you get your imagination going is to go back and remember. And, you know, we're now entering into where we're starting to build again and get this student housing done. And you know what I've been doing in the last month or so? I've been going back and remembering. Matter of fact, Carrie is on my executive team, and I printed out a thing yesterday at our meeting, and I, I wrote three pages of things just remembering, God, here's what you've done in the past, and I, you're my shepherd. I'm not ever going to lessen. I'm not going to decrease and so if this is what you did in the past, then, man, I'm using this to help me envision and see what's yeah. coming in the future. So one of the ways, it's not the only way, but one of the ways you get your imagination working is to go back and remember. You stir up your imagination. Well, and that's one of the things the Holy Spirit it says that you will bring back to our remembrance the words that Jesus has spoken. But he also brings back to remembrance what he's done for us the testimonies he's already done. Look, I already paid the bills. I already healed you here. You remember that? It ignites something to believe for the future. Amen. All right, so another question here is, um, Tony on Facebook asks us, how do we renew our minds to get rid of a poverty mindset and experience God's blessing on our lives? I just happened to have talked about this today, too, <laughs> that 
back in 1996, I knew scriptures on prosperity. I have tithed and given out of every penny I've ever gotten. So it's not like I didn't have some revelation, but I had religious tradition. Mm. It taught me that ministers yeah. are supposed to be poor and just a lot of stuff. You know, Jesus said in Mark 7, 13, that traditions and doctrines of men make the word of God of none effect. And so even though I knew scriptures, it wasn't releasing its power in my life because of religious tradition. So what I did, I, I saw that I was struggling in this area. There was a time in our ministry where we were given over to collection agencies. They were going to close us down. We had a lot of problems. And uh, I knew I was having a problem. So what I did was take about 100 scriptures on prosperity. And I wrote them out on a legal pad. This is back before I had a computer. And I wrote them out. And I just started meditating on them. And I did this for two years. Mm -hmm. Some people are discouraged by that. But, you know, it's similar to a woman when she gives birth. You don't just get pregnant and give birth like that. You incubate this for nine months. Yep. Yep. And so there is a period of time when you take the word and it conceives on the inside of you and it takes time to bring it to birth. And so for me, it took two years of meditating on that. And then all of a sudden, God used a man who I was seeing prosper and he spoke. And all of a sudden, the pieces fit together. It broke the religious traditions and doctrines of man that were hindering me. And I mean, those seeds that I had planted in me all of a sudden gave birth. And I started seeing awesome miracles. And, and now it That's is good. phenomenal. Like we were talking yeah. earlier, it was either 22 or 28 months. We paid off $28 million mm -hmm. in that brief period of time. And that's above the $6 million it takes per month for our ministry to function. Yep. That's phenomenal. Yep. And we expanded. Amen. We grew. <laughs> We grew two or 300 employees <laughs> during this period of time. At the same time, we were paying off all of this debt. And it comes because we took the word and you sow it in your heart. Amen. So that's the way you do it. So Leah asked a question. It's a really good question. She said, how can I learn to depend on God fully for financial things and him being my source when I'm a teenager and still depending on my mom to provide for me? How can I encourage her with these truths without stepping out of my bounds and still being her daughter? Well, you have some money that is yours. Now, you, don't, you aren't responsible for tithing and giving off of your parents' money, but whatever money comes your way, you be faithful with what you've got. I remember my oldest son, Joshua, when we lived in Childress, Texas, and this is back during our poverty days, and we had no money whatsoever. And he was about one or two, well, he would have been two years old. And he wanted a swimming pool, just one of these little, you know, six foot wide plastic swimming pools. And the thing probably cost $30 or something, but we didn't have $30 and we weren't going to get $30 anytime in the near future. But he wanted it and he says, I can give towards this. And so he took, I think he had 50 cents or something like that. Wow. And he gave it to a woman in our church and he gave it specifically for that purpose. And within a week, he had that swimming pool. I don't know exactly. I don't remember how it happened, but it didn't happen through us. We didn't have the money to buy it. And that's awesome. He got. I mean, he was two years old, and he gave, wow. and he got it returned. So the same thing will work for you. You don't worry about the money you don't have control over, but whatever you get, instead of spending all of it, you know, going out and and spending ten dollars on something. Spend five dollars on something less and take that other and give a portion of it and it'll start working for you. It doesn't matter who you are. That's good. Amen. And good job, Leah, that as a teenager you're watching Amen. Life Bible study. I'm so That's proud awesome. of you. So Ruthie asked this on chat. She says, How do we help others realize that when Psalms twenty three talks about the rod and the staff, uh, it doesn't mean abuse? Well, first of all, Rod and staff would never mean abuse unless you had been taught religious traditions that yeah. that's what it means. And this is what religion has done. They've taken that to say that he's going to beat you with the rod. He's mm -hmm. going to hurt you. A shepherd doesn't use his rod and staff to beat the sheep. He might prod them to poke them in this direction, but it's not hurting them. He actually uses that rod to fight off wolves and uh, things that would attack them. It is not punishment. So... 
Uh, Ruthie, it, it, the only reason that anybody interprets that scripture that way is because of wrong teaching, traditions and doctrines of man. So just go back to the word and sit there and tell them, man, how does a shepherd use rod? He doesn't use it to beat his sheep and to hurt them and put cancer on them and break a leg to teach them something. He uses that staff. You know, if it had a crook, a shepherd's staff, he would use it to reach down and lift them out of something and to help them not hurt them. So that's just religious tradition and doctrines of man. And the only antidote for that is just the truth. You yeah. shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. That's good. So a Gwen on Facebook says this, I experienced horrible fear growing up with a rage full of a scary father. I felt like I was being forsaken. What does it mean to not be forsaken? Well, first of all, you need to recognize that God is a good father. He's not a bad father. And so you need to not let the bad example that you've seen influence you. And I know that some people say, but you can't do that. You can do that. Amen. You can do that. God, I've heard people before get mad at somebody in the church who did something and they, they just leave the church. And I think, well, but God didn't do that to you. A person did that to you. Yeah. So instead of letting emotions dominate you, I understand that having an abusive father is a bad thing and it could cause all kinds of negative emotions, but just use your brain and sit there and say that that wasn't God. Mm -hmm. My father is not representative of God the Father. That's good. And so make that distinction and then go back to the Word of God again and see the way that God was gentle towards people. Again, go back to Psalms 23, that the Lord is my shepherd. Think of Him as a shepherd instead of a disciplinarian and somebody who's going to punish you every time you do something wrong. Mm -hmm. But you have to get into the Word of God and see how gently He deals with people. Look at Peter who denied Him three times and even swore to prove that he had nothing to do with Jesus. And yet Jesus, after the resurrection, embraced Peter and brought him back and actually put him in a position of authority in the church and used him in spite of all of his failures. That's the way that God is. God is a good God. He's not the harsh God that you've seen, uh, you know, patterned for you and your father. That's good. All right, so uh, Erica asked this. She says, I find myself being impatient about God's promises. Maybe it's because I'm in my 20s. She says, can I somehow accelerate these promises? You can, but if your goal is to accelerate them and, and stuff, that's actually going to prolong them. Mm -hmm. The way you accelerate seeing the things of God come into pass is to, like say, for instance, you're believing for, I don't know, one thing to happen. Sometimes the best thing you can do to bring that to pass is to just literally cast your care about it over on the Lord, forget it, and say, God, that's your problem. And then you just go back and focus on God and love God. And it comes to mind you believing for a husband. <laughs> Tell them your story because yeah. you gave it over to God is when it worked. Yeah, I think you know it's really easy to put a timeline on the Lord and say, God, I want it like this and I want it this way versus saying, Lord, I believe your word is true. I believe it belongs to me. But Lord, I also take your promises and say, Lord, your will be done. And I think that when we can just let, let the Holy Spirit be, be the one who brings things to pass, that's what I did. I said, Lord, I'd love to be married, married, but it's not my timing, so I give it to you. I just focus on you. I run after you. Then, then God orchestrated it all in his timing, and I had eyes to see when it was him versus me trying to make things happen in my own And flesh. so you were in Russia believing mm -hmm. for an American husband. Yeah. And so the, the odds of that happening were <laughs> next to nothing. So God brought him from Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah. And also you actually came to a place to where you said, God, I'm willing to be single the rest of my life. Yeah. If that's what you, you just gave it over to God and you quit focusing on it. Yeah. And I have heard, you know, I've heard testimonies of people saying that they tried to have children and they were unable to have children mm -hmm. and they just, they fret about it and pray about it and finally they just give up. And so they say, all right, we're going to adopt. And then all of a sudden they get pregnant. Exactly. And I have heard testimonies about that many, many times. And sometimes it's like uh, I was coming out of a bathroom one time and I was trying to teach my oldest uh, or my youngest son to talk. He was three years old and wasn't talking yet. And I was, 
he was going to open this door and it was really hard to open and he had both hands around this doorknob and it wasn't opening and plus he put his foot on the door which was counterproductive <laughs> and he looked up at me and I knew exactly what he wanted me to do but I said I'm not going to open the door until you talk and he wouldn't talk so we just had a standoff there <laughs> and finally I was going to open the door, but I told him, I said, I can't do anything until you let it go because he had his hands around it. And if I would have grabbed that doorknob and squeezed it, it would have hurt him. And I mm -hmm. said, I can't do anything until you let it go. And as soon as I told him that, the Lord spoke to me and he says, that's the way it is, Andrew. I can't do anything with these things that you're obsessing about mm -hmm. until you let that's them so go. And so that's what we've got to do. And so you just need to turn it over to the Lord and yeah. say, God, the only real thing I desire is you. These other things that I believe you want me to have, I believe I will have them, but that's not what I'm seeking. I'm seeking you. You seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these other things will be added unto you. That's Matthew good. 6, 33. Amen. That's awesome. Well, we're out of time. We're out of it time. Quickly. It went very quickly, Nate. So we had some other really good questions. So what I encourage you, we do a question ev a question time every Tuesday afternoon on Andrew Womack Ministries' Facebook page. And so uh, go to that, sign up, hit like. And then what we're doing is we do a roundup. And so we have another option, another opportunity for your questions to get answered. So we take the best of all of the week of questions we didn't get answered. So we would love, love, love to hear that from you guys. So uh, please do that. And then also we we also have, um, I forgot to announce this, every time uh, we do a Tuesday night Bible study, there's an opportunity to get a blessing. And that is if you sign up for the awmi.net slash Bible study notes. And what we do is we send the notes of whether it's either Andrew, last week was Jeremy Pearson. Uh, we send those notes to you so you can continue to study them through the week. So if you sign up for that, we register you. We always have a free gift. This week is how to find follow and fulfill God's will for your life. And that's what I'm teaching on television it's now. And this is my last so week. It's so good, so good, you guys. I'm going to encourage you. Uh, call our prayer ministers if you're saying, I need that book or someone else needs that book. Also, last week we gave a whole bunch of Jeremy Pearson's things away. And so we had a number of people that won that. So we're going to get that to you. It was, it was like four or five people. And so Ab uh, Angela Anderson, Elizabeth Bruning, uh, Angelica Camarina, and Don Spaulding. You all won some something last week. So we're going to send that out to you. But for those who says, I really, really need uh, to know what the word says. What else can I get? Please call our prayer line. We would love to pray with you and help you get some resources. And so let me encourage you that at seven in the morning, I think your husband Mike's on, isn't he? Yep. Yes, he is. So he's going to be ministering at seven in the morning for our daily Bible study. And then remember that on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of this week at 3 p.m. Mountain Time, we're going to have the Truth Lovers live cast where I teach for about 20 minutes and then we take over an hour's worth of calls. And like uh, Carrie was saying, they aren't just texts that you send in. You yeah. literally come on the program and we get to interact with you yeah. and talk to you. And so that'll be good. Check it out at 3 p.m. on Wednesday through Friday. Yeah, Mountain Time. God bless you guys. And if you need prayer for anything, we've got people standing by now 24-7 at our phone center Amen. at 719-635-1111. Uh, so call if we can Amen. help you, pray with you, help you in any way. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you again. Bye. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 